Excel often gives us some things that are difficult to analyze, but I'm gonna show you how to go from a form with a one to five feedback results, score from one to five, into a combination of clickable slices and pivot tables here. And also a box and whisker diagram like this, which sort of breaks it down further. Now there's a few steps to this. We're actually going to use Power Query and Power Pivot and pivot tables and slices, as well as charts. So I'm gonna go through quite a lot, but I will do it quite fast because uh, if you want to replay it, then you can watch it in your own time. So the way that the input results looks is like this. So here I have a number of problems with this data. Firstly, this is quite typical of data that you get from forms, which means that there are different columns and each column has one to five in a lot of options. This is based on a training course that I did uh, about Excel, ironically. And then I asked them, for example, how do you rate the speed? And they get the answers in both English and the traditional Cambodian language called Khmer. Uh, then there are some text things like what do you find best or useful, what were not clear, and any additional comments. But I want to analyze and get a summary of overall how did these questions fare in terms of what were the average results and also compare them against each other to see which of these did well and which of these didn't. So it's not that easy to use unless you use the combination of tools that I'm about to show you. So let's uh, start from scratch with the file that is blank. So here I am in the blank file and this is just showing me sheet one. This is data that comes from Microsoft Forms, which is used for data analysis and you can download the file as is. Now what you can do here is you can go to the data tab and we're going to choose this that comes from table or range. In particular, my headers are in one row here. Very often I see people creating data sets with multiple rows for headers. That makes a lot of things much harder here, I have exported it from Microsoft Forms, so it's kind of neatly spread out, but I want to do certain adjustments to this data. So I'm going to go to the Data tab and choose From Table or Range. This opens up the Power Query Editor. So this is a whole new window that's not even Excel anymore. Power Query is just a way to transform and reshape your data from something to something else. Now I'm going to do a whistle stop tour of the features I need to make this work. If you want a more in-depth Power Query tutorial, then I have more on my channel. So firstly, I'm going to expand this window. I'm gonna right click here and choose a reference. I'm actually going to do that two times because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to split the input table into two output tables. This one I'm going to call one, two, five responses. And the second one I'm going to call text answers. Now, each of these is going to deal with the different columns. So for this one, the text answers, I'm going to go in the home tab to choose columns. And I'm just going to tick the ID column that's important for the link. And then the four last columns, which are to do with text answers. So as you can see, these are the text answers. It's not the one to five ones. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit more. I'm going to just sort of rename these. So make it something really quick, like speed, question mark. And then this is going to be liked. It's going to be unclear. This is going to be further comments. And then I'm going to uh, just sort of split this, take out the uh, local Kamai language. To do that, I'm going to click on it and do transform extract text before delimiter. And I'm going to say it's going to be a space, but it's going to start from the end of the input. I don't use this very often, but for this, it's very useful because the space character means that it swaps to English. Press OK, and then it's fixed there. So now I'm going to go to the other one. And in this one, I'm also going to choose the columns that I need. So I'm gonna do this in another way. I'm going to select all the columns that are useful right until the one to five ends. Hold down shift and click there. 
So it selects everything in between. Then go to the Home tab and choose Remove Columns, Remove Other Columns. By the way, I have another video where I explain the better way to remove columns and rows, and I don't like using this one. I explain why in the other video, but this one is good. Um, so once I've done that, now what I can do is I can click on the first column and go to the Transform tab and choose Unpivot and Unpivot Other Columns. What that does is it transforms it from lots and columns and not many rows into lots of rows and not many columns. If I go back one step, I have 12 columns, 11 rows. If I go here, I end up having three columns and one, two, one rows. In fact, these were the columns that were shown like this. And here I have the value. I'm actually going to rename these. So this is going to be score and this is going to be question. Now from here, I'm going to click there and go to add column and I'm going to choose to do standard divide and it's divide by five because I'm rating it out of five. So this is, I'm not going to call it division. I'm going to call this uh, percentage score and I can mark this as a percentage. And then this one, I'm going to just keep the English again, slightly different way to do this. Again, a more advanced trick that I don't tend to use, but when you have line breaks like this, you can click on it. You can go to split column and choose by delimiter. And then I'm going to do, so it's actually recommended to do this one. I'm going to press okay. Let's see if that works. Yep. Yeah. So just to go back, the one that it's chosen is special character and it is this thing called a line feed which separates from one row to the next one. And now click back on the last step. And here what I'm gonna do is pre-select the columns to keep, which are these ones. And then choose once again, like we did before, I'm going to choose remove other columns. Uh, this can be renamed to just question like that. And then I have set up my data the way that I need to in Power Query. Once we've done that, I'm going to press close and load. And then Power Query is going to load to three separate worksheets the data that I need, uh, one for each query. Now, the query, I'm going to rename this. So this is going to be the sheet called one to five responses. This is going to be the text answers. And then the last one. Well, this one, I don't actually need it because this is sort of the one that I immediately referenced. So what I can actually do is I can right click and delete this query. Uh, it's still got the query in the query pane. It's just showing us connection only versus the other two that are loading. Um, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the load settings for these two. I'm going to right click it and choose load two. And I'm going to tick this that says add this to the data model. I'm going to use that for each of them. Just press OK there doesn't matter because I haven't created anything yet. This one, I'm going to press load to add this to the data model as well. This is needed in order to create relationships between my tables. Now I'm going to go into Power Pivot. So what I can do is I can click on data, choose this. This is the relationships tab. Then I can press new and I'm going to link in both of them on the data model. I'm going to link the one that's called ID like that. That is creating a table relationship. I have another video where I talk more about what that means, but here I'm just doing a kind of quickish response. Finally, now I'm going to create a new sheet and I'm going to insert a pivot table. I didn't select any source data because the source data is use this workbooks data model. Notice that I ticked add to this data model and that's why I needed to do that. Press OK. And then you have the fields list like this generates all you essentially want the one with this kind of icon with the orange sort of cylinder there. Now I'm going to create a couple of pivot tables. The first one is going to be looking at the one to five responses. So I'm going to click on question and percentage score like that. I don't want to sum. I want an average. So I right click on it and I choose summarize values by average like this. 
then maybe just make it a nicer percentage. Just go to make it a percentage there. I'm going to insert a couple more pivot tables. So insert pivot table. And I'm going to again use this workbooks data model. In this case, I'm going to get stuff from the text answers. So one thing that is interesting is whether people found the speed useful. So put speed in rows and put ID in values there. Notice again, I use the one with this symbol. That means it comes from the data model. So everything is going to be ticked. And this is going to be a sum. I don't want a sum. I actually want a count like that. So this is how many people said it went fast, how many people said it went a good speed, etc. And finally, I like to see this in percent. So I'm going to add ID a second time. This time I'm going to choose summarize by count and I'm going to choose show values as percent like that. And then I'm going to again use my percentage tab. I'm going to rename these so this is going to be people and this is going to just be percent like that. I'm going to add a couple more one for the text responses. So what I'm going to do is uh, just sort of insert another pivot table and I'm going to put in text answers. I'm going to choose what they liked. And I just need that in rows. That's all I need here. I'm going to click in this cell and rename this to liked. I'm going to do the same for what they didn't like. Here's a shortcut. You can just select the pivot table, copy, and then paste it below. And then it creates another pivot table that is independent from the first one. So one tick liked and click on unclear like this. Rename this to unclear. Interesting pivot table came out as a constant thing in both what was unclear and what was liked. Now, the next thing we're going to do is insert a slicer that is going to give us an indication of how people answered depending on this criteria. So people who said it was fast, it was good speed or much too fast. How did they answer? Let's extend this a little bit and let's insert a click on the insert tab and choose a slicer. And I'm going to go with all and choose again using the one with the orange icon how the speed was. And now it's able to change based on what people decided. Another thing I often do in this is I select it and I go to conditional formatting and I choose data bars. This will give you an indication of how people fared versus the maximum. So this is quite a good one there. As we can see, the people who said it was a good speed tended to score a little bit faster. I can even if I want to sort this by clicking more sort options and sort ascending by average score. And then it's sorted like that. So the people who said it was a good speed tended to score better. The people who went for a little fast or much too fast tended to score lower. Notice there was only one person who said it was much too fast as well. I can also have this slicer influence the other pivot tables by clicking on it. Click on slicer, choose report connections and choose the other pivot tables there. And then if I click on these things, it will show me the outputs. A couple of annoyances that we're going to clean up. So uh, firstly, you can see it's resizing the columns with each pivot table, which is a bit annoying. And secondly, I will not want this slicer to influence this pivot table in particular because it's kind of useless to just give me the answers there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, click on this pivot table, fix it one by one in terms of problems, go to analyze options and then untick auto fit column widths on update. I need to do that one by one for each one. And for this one, I'm going to do that and do one other thing. The other thing is I'm going to go into pivot table name also in analyze and rename this to speed question. 
You can have a space here, it doesn't mind having a space. And then I'm going to need to click on there and take off the filter. And now if I resize this one, then this slicer will then not resize things, but it does influence both of them. So the last step for this slicer is I need to go into slicer and report connections, untick speed question. Notice this is why it's useful to rename it because the other ones are not very useful there. And then select all, and now it doesn't influence that one there. The other thing that I did was I did show a box and whisker chart. Box and whisker charts I find are the most useful way to analyze the spread of data as well as the averages. Let's select this column all the way to the bottom and then also select this one holding down control so you select the columns that are not next to each other and then go to insert and in Excel 2016 you have this box and whisker chart. This is really good. As you can see, this is showing us uh, not just the average, the average, the mean is the X. What I like to actually do is make these show up in black so it's easier to see the outline. Yeah, that's a lot clearer. The line is the median. The top and bottom of the box are the upper and lower quartiles. And this is the minimum and maximum. Because we don't have that many data points for each one, that's why we have sort of a mix of what we see. In this case, we have all of them. And these dots, these are actually outliers that sort of fall outside of uh, what's deemed to be a statistical outlier. I have another video where I talk about these box and whisker charts. I do really recommend learning how they work if you are doing any kind of analysis on data like this. So uh, here, this is deemed to be a regular chart. Unfortunately, there's no way to get the slicer to influence it for now because you can't create a pivot chart of it. You can only create a regular chart. But I'm gonna take that into sheet five, maybe rename that. So this is analysis. And that is essentially a whistle stop tour, which also gives you a bit of an idea of what kind of things Power Query Power Pivot and Slicers can do for your data. Great, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then my name is David Van Eyam. I make tons of videos on my channel about Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Teams, Zoom, Google Sheets, etc. Please click the like button if you wanna see more and subscribe because I keep releasing more great content. Thanks for watching.